Good morning. Welcome to Jesus the Rock Church. We're going to continue in the Bible study in the book of Acts. Kind of fair weather today. We're expecting rain, so hopefully it'll hold out during our Bible study. We're going to be in chapter 10 this morning, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. A centurion of the band called the Italian band. The Italian. You talking to me? We got the Italian band. Verse 2. A devout man. One that feared God with all his house. Which gave much alms to the people. And prayed to God always. Verse 3. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. Now see, a devout man, one that feared God with all his house, that means with all his whole family, his servants, his helpers, his friends, his whole house, everyone that was under his roof, under his authority, feared God. They gave much alms, which means they gave stuff away. All right, may give food, may give money, may give things. We don't know, but it says gave much alms to the people. And they prayed to God always. And then he sees the vision. Do you pray like that every day? Do you fear God? Are you a devout person? Do you give to people much, as in the scriptures say? You see... The more that you're in prayer, the more spiritual encounters you'll have. Just like in verse 3, in the ninth hour, he had a vision. Verse 4, when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. So his alms and his prayers came up as a memorial before God. Came up as a memorial before the Father. So you think, you see the government, things that's ruling up in the heavenlies, feared God, prayed, gave things away, and he gave and prayed so much that it took the attention of God that your things have come up as a memorial before me. Now I'm going to answer you. Do you pray like that? Do you seek the Lord like that earnestly? Verse 5. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Verse 6. He lodges with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He should tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spoke unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. Verse 8. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. So, he had a vision. He was told what to do. Now he's acting on putting into action what he was told. See, a lot of times in our dreams or in our visions, we hear things that we need to do but we don't put them into action. I exhort you, start doing the things God wants you to do. On the morrow, verse 9, on the morrow, as they went on their journey, they drew nigh into the city. Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. And he saw heaven opened. Oh, beautiful birds. Hopefully at home you can hear him singing just as much as I can. I love it. Praise the Lord. And a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet, knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. See? So he's seeing a vision. Verse 12. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. <clears throat> Verse 13. 
And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. So he said, No, I'm not going to do that. I don't eat unclean animals. Fifteen, and the voice spoke unto him again a second time. Now, see, do we really need to have God or the Holy Spirit repeat himself? He says, What God has cleansed, thou call not, thou common. So here, what God is teaching Peter is a principle. What I have cleansed, you are not to call common. This was done thrice, three times. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now, while Peter doubted in himself that this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry of Simon's house and stood before the gate. And called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. So... He's like, is this person in the house? Does he live here? So I'm searching for him. Verse 19, While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Verse 20, Arise. Again, we see, Arise. This is a spiritual principle. Arise. Therefore, and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing. Brothers and sisters, what you learn in Scripture what you hear from the Holy Spirit, what you hear spoken to you in dreams or visions, doubt not. Doubting nothing. God is for you, not against you. God loves you. God wants to prosper you. But in order for God to prosper you, you have to obedient and go where God is telling you to go. Do what God is telling you to do. I love it. Doubting nothing, for I have sent them. So, he's getting confirmation that this is of God. This isn't of his own pigmentation. This is not his own dream. Or, you know, I ate a lot before I went to sleep. And I had this really wild dream. And, you know, now these, you know, Gentiles or whatever. Somebody's weird knocking on my door. No, I'm not going to go with them. No. God is giving Peter confirmation this is of me. Do it. Verse 21, Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is this cause wherefore you are come? 22, And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of good report. Do you have good report? I hope you do. And good report among all the nation of the Jews was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. See, Peter's carrying words of life. Do you have words of life? I hope you do. Verse 23. Then called he them in and lodged them, and on the morrow... Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. So he had some buddies go with him. Verse 24, And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. So he's calling all his buddies. Hey, this Peter, he's come to my place. He's here now. Come on. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Uh -uh. You don't worship a man, flesh and blood. You don't fall down before a man and start worshipping him. Verse 26, but Peter took him up, grabbed him up. Stand up, I myself also am a man. 27, And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, You know how that it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company 
or come unto one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Right here, verse 28. God has shown me I shall not call any man common or unclean. In other words, Peter, you should not judge another man. See, judgment is left up to God. You are not to pass judgment on your fellow brother. Therefore came I unto you, without saying gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore, for what intent ye have sent for me. So he wants to know, how come? Verse 30, And Cornelius said, Four days ago, I was fasting. How many times a year do you fast, brothers and sisters? This is a spiritual principle. Four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. So until this hour, he was fasting four days. How many days can you go without eating or drinking? You look on my size, not many. <laughs> but four days until this hour, the ninth hour, I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. Now do you see, a spiritual principle here has been revealed. Fasting for four days, then a man in bright clothing shows up. 31. And said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Hallelujah. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a Tamer, Tanner, by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto you. Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God. So, Peter's in the house, his family's in the house, Cornelius is there hosting it, he's got his servants, he's got his friends, he's got the whole thing, and it says, we are before God. Hallelujah. And hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. 35. But in every nation he that hear, feareth him and works righteousness is accepted with him. Doesn't matter if you're an Indian if you're a Muslim, if you're a uh, Gentile, Italian, Greek, doesn't matter what nationality, what background you come from, if you fear God, you're accepted of Him. Thirty-six. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. 37. That word, I say, you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. See, John the baptism. John the Baptist preached about the baptism of water. Okay? But he also then, after that, John the Baptist preached, the one is coming that I am not worthy to lose his sandals, he will baptize you with fire. You see? So, this is the same theme in Scripture. 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. You see, right here, Scripture is confirming itself. We read in verse 1 and 2 that you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. After you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, then you will receive power. It's saying here, Jesus anointed, God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost 
and with power. After the Holy Ghost comes upon you, then you'll have power. It's confirming itself again. Healing all who are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. When you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, you have power, and you can do the same exact thing because God is with you. 39. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, who they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Again, Scripture's telling you Jesus was, did die, he was crucified, he did die, and he did rise again. These are witnesses. They're testifying to you. Verse 43. To give him all the prophets witness that though his name whosoever believe in him shall receive the remissions of sin. Who All you got to do is believe in Jesus and he will forgive your sin. 44. While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. Hearing is just not with your ears. Hearing is with your heart. Receiving it, accepting it, and believing it. 45. And they were, they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. God has opened the doors for the Gentiles to receive the same blessings as the Jews. 46. For they heard them speak with tongues. Aha, we hear it again. You get blessed in the Holy Ghost. You get baptized in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost fell upon them, and they began speaking in other tongues. Why are you afraid of it? Why do you judge wrongly that tongue talkers are horrible? Can't let that in our church. Oh, shut those doors. Those tongue talkers, you got to stay silent. Right here in Scripture. The gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out, and they heard them speak with tongues and magnified God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water? Okay? Serious question. Can any man forbid water? Okay, verse 47. That these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. I have been preaching it right along. The apostles spoke with tongues, and if they spoke with tongues, how much more than we need to follow in their footsteps? My heart, how dare a leader in leadership forbid the gift of the Holy Ghost and shut the Holy Spirit out of his congregation because he doesn't agree with God. He doesn't like what God promised. He thinks he knows more than God. These should not be baptized. Can a man forbid water? Which Peter is saying, is a man going to forbid the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Okay. Verse 48, And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him, they him to tarry certain days. Commanded them to be baptized. This is why I am doing the Bible study on the book of Acts. This is the last chapter, on, uh, last verse in the chapter 10. My heart, brothers and sisters, I've been to many, many churches. I've tried explaining and reasoning with them, and I've gotten the right foot of fellowship because I'm a tongue, tongue talker. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I try to reason them with Scripture, but nope, don't want to hear it. Nope, the elders and us, no, 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 we skip over that chapter. We don't need to hear that. You in leadership that has refused the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I am prophesying to you right now, you better repent. 
I cannot see. I am feeling this welling up in my spirit. Repent. You leaders, elders, deacons, pastors, men and women in authority in your church, you have refused the Holy Spirit to be poured out upon your sheep because you don't agree with your theology and doctrine that you know more than God. It was commanded in the scriptures in the book of Acts that wait and tarry for the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Tongues is not something to be feared. Tongues is not something that should be forbidden. Repent of your evil deeds. Allow the God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus to enter in and give these gifts unto men that was intended from the beginning that all the disciples did. Oh, whew. Paul, the great apostle, he told in scriptures, I can speak in tongues more than you all. My question to you, leadership and pastors and elders and deacons, do you really think Paul was bragging? Hey, hey, look at me. I can do it better than you. No. He's keeping order in the church. He is saying to all generations after him, I speak in tongues. Okay? A few verses after that, he speaks about if there's no interpretation of tongues, one should remain silent. Okay? There's your gift that you edify yourself speaking in tongues because it's the direct line to God the Father. But when you, as an individual, pray in tongues and you overtake the worship uh, music, you overtake the pastor preaching in the middle of his sermon because your tongues have gone to a level that it stops the whole entire service because Paul was teaching about order, that there better be an interpretation. But you have brothers and sisters that are going through trials and tribulations, and they want to pray in tongues. Be in your seat, pray in tongues. You're not stopping the surface. But if you're saying it so loud, you're interrupting everyone else around you loudly that they can't preach or they can't sing up on stage because they're 25 feet away from you, and nobody else can hear what they're saying, there better be an interpretation. There's an orderly things to do. But your leaders need to open the door and let the Holy Spirit into your church. It's commanded to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Just because you took a dunk in the water doesn't mean you know everything. There are baptisms. It's all in Scripture. You repent. You ask the Father for forgiveness, you're saved, you get water baptized, then after you ask and you get received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues straight out of scriptures. If you cannot speak in tongues, I promise you, you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit makes sure that you know, that you know, that you know that you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. There is no question. It is a spiritual thing that has come upon you. And the proof in the flesh is that you speak in tongues. I'm sorry if I got so bold. I'm sorry if I offended you. But the truth shall set you free. Get baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's free. It's a gift from a loving Father who wants to do this for you. He has designed this for all generations and for leadership and pastors to stop it. You're sin. You're in sin. Be blessed. Meditate and pray about this. Hear from God yourself. And He will reveal the truth to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. I'm sorry I got that boldness of fire in my spirit. God loves you. He's for you. He's not against you. If you ask for bread, He's not going to give you a stone. If you ask for the baptism of the Spirit, He's not going to do something weird. I'll see you next time. We'll pick up this Bible study. I love you. Be blessed. Jesus is Lord. Why? Because He is. Whether you like it or not, why? Because He loves you. God bless. Bye-bye.